Good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome back to the Typewriter video series. And today I have two ultra portable machines. Hermes Rocket just recently returned from Bill Wall's repair shop in Mesa, Arizona, and my Smith Corona Skywriter. I thought it would be a good opportunity to compare these two ultra portable machines. Stay tuned. As you might be aware, there are a number of different kinds of typewriters out there, manuals and electrics and electronics, and in the manual category, you have full-size upright or standard machines. You have portables, and portables are sort of generally classified as medium-sized portables and what we might call ultra-portables. These two typewriters are in that latter category of ultra-portable, the kind of typewriter that would be easy to carry around in a shoulder bag, a messenger bag, a larger satchel bag, a briefcase, or a backpack. Uh, they generally w don't weigh that much, and of course they're pretty small. And with this uh, kind of reduced footprint size and uh, weight, Usually it comes at the expense of some features that are missing from these typewriters that would otherwise be in a more full-featured, larger typewriter. In the category of ultra-portable, these two are among the, most, the more highly sought-after ultra-portable typewriters. The Hermes Rocket and also the Baby, Hermes Baby. And of course, the Smith Corona Skyrider. Now, both of these machines have been in production or had been in production for decades. This Smith Corona Skyrider is made in England. Uh, a lot of them were also made in America, of course. This of course, Hermes Rocket is made in Switzerland, and this is the older style. And this rocket was made, uh, I date it to 1953, according to the serial number database, the, uh, operated by the Right Reverend Ted Monk. Whereas the Smith Corona Skyrider in my collection was manufactured in 1962, according to the serial number database. So these two machines are nine years apart in age, this one, of course, being the older one. So first of all, let's start with the Smith Corona Skyrider. The Skyrider is dimensionally 290 millimeters wide from knob to knob. It is 307 millimeters deep from front to back, and it is about 75 millimeters tall. That's with the carriage return arm in the collapsed position like that, measuring from the joint back here. And it weighs 3,458 grams, or 3.458 kilograms. Okay, so the Hermes Rocket is 286 millimeters wide, so it's only about uh, four millimeters narrower than the Skyrider, but it's only 285 millimeters deep, so it's almost perfectly square in footprint, so it's uh, it's about almost 20 millimeters shorter in depth, and it's only about 65 millimeters tall, which is about 10 millimeters shorter than the Skyrider, and it weighs 3,350 grams, 3.35 kilograms, it's, so it's about 100 or so grams in less weight than the, the Skyrider, and of course the weight is with both machines with ribbons in them, and of course I'm not taking into account the lid that goes on to the to the Hermes rocket, just in the open position like this. So they're very similar in size. The rocket's a little bit smaller in footprint and a little bit lighter. Well, let's compare features between both typewriters, shall we? Starting with the rocket. Well, one thing that's obvious uh, if you look at these two machines is the carriage return arms on the rocket. It's very short like that, kind of folds down like that and like that to store it. Whereas on the Smith Corona Skyrider, it's quite a bit longer of a uh, carriage return arm. It actually extends almost all the way to the front of the uh, uh, segment opening on the ribbon cover. Uh, both machines have a single color operation. There's no bichrome setting. So you have to use a single color ribbon. And of course, they both have uh, margin settings on the back here. As far as the uh, paper support, the Rocket has a fold-up paper support like this that folds either way. There's a little slot here for you to get your fingernail in to pull it up. Whereas the Skyrider has this geared, spring-loaded, rabbit ear style paper support like that that folds back down in the back. Both uh, machines have a 
carriage release lever only on the right hand platen knob here and here. The one on the rocket is a little bit higher up and easier to reach where the one on the Skyrider is sort of down here behind the knob. They both have a paper release lever. On the rocket it's this folded lever down here right behind the right side of the uh, paper table. Uh, it's easy to get confused though with this little metal bracket here next to it. That's not the paper release lever, that's just part of the articulating spring mechanism for the carriage release. But anyway, this you pull forward, it raises up the paper table slightly and it releases the pressure rollers. Whereas on the Skyrider, it's this knob here and on my machine it's angled a little bit. And that is the pressure release for the, the tension of the pressure rollers right there. As far as line spacing, I have it set to one. It says one on the indicator and it's two clicks. And if you set it to two, it's three clicks. So <laughs> it's actually one line spacing and one and a half line spacing two clicks versus three clicks. That's one and one and a half. So it's a, it's a half space vertically per click of the carriage on the rocket. Now on the Skyrider, the line spacing selector is, I think, normally one and two line spacing, but mine has a broken metal tab on the line spacing, so it's actually permanently set to one line spacing, single line spacing, so I can't change it on this particular machine. Since we're talking about the carriage, let's talk about carriage lock. On the Hermes rocket, there is no carriage lock. So you basically have to just visibly center the two knobs on either side of the typewriter and then putting the lid on place on the machine centers the knobs on the machines inside the machine's lid and that's what keeps the carriage from moving is physically the lid itself. Whereas on the Skyrider there is this angled knob above the left hand rear part of the carriage. If you push it to the left or to the right it will lock, go engage into a locking position like that. So that is a nice little feature that the Skyrider has. Okay, comparing the paper tables of both machines, the Rocket has the scale indication on the back of the paper table up here and it also has it on the paper bale right here and it goes from 0 to about 117 according to this scale right here and it looks like the numbers between the bale and the table they looks like they do correspond pretty exactly whereas on the Skyrider you have the only paper scale is actually on the flip up paper bale on the front edge right here and it goes from 0 to about 98 which reminds me the difference in typeface between these two particular machines the Hermes rocket on the, this particular example is a 13 character per inch typeface whereas the, the Skyrider, this particular Skyrider is a 12 character per inch typeface. So the rocket has a slightly smaller typeface and because of that seemingly small difference of one character per inch, it gives you, according to the, at least the paper scale, it gives you about 107, 117 versus about 98 or 99. So about 18 more characters which is interesting. The knobs on the rocket are about 25 millimeters in diameter and they're pretty thin. The knobs on the Skyrider are about 28 millimeters in diameter at the widest point. They're kind of tapered conically and they're quite a bit thicker. On the rocket, the triangular piece is for putting cards behind it for typing on like business cards or whatever and then the hole is for putting a pen or pencil in there to draw lines on the paper. Whereas the Skyrider has two such triangular shaped uh, card guides but there's no real hole per se for drawing lines although you could use the vertex of the triangular opening right on top uh, to as a place to put your pen or pencil to draw lines. Now the ribbon covers are decidedly very different between both of these machines. On the Skyrider it just flips up like that, it's hinged. It gives you full access to the segment and the ribbons. Whereas the Rocket the segment is kind of open the way it is and then each ribbon cover is a little conical rocket nose cone shaped piece like that 
So that's you open these two up to gain access to change the ribbon. The rocket is going to take the more universal style, modern sized spool. Whereas the Skyrider takes a smaller diameter spool and if you have an older set of spools with a modern universal replacement, you'll have to re-thread the ribbon onto the older smaller spool. So the Skyrider uses a smaller diameter spool than the commonly available universal kind. Okay, let's look at the ribbon vibrators on both machines. So on the Skyrider, the ribbon vibrator is raised into position by a lever or linkage coming from down below the segment, whereas in the rocket, the vibrator is actually this horizontal arm situated here that's pivoted right here. Let me fold the I'll pull the ribbon out of the way, maybe you can see it. Anyway, this arm right here raises up into position like that, so it just pivots. It's a little bit of a simpler kind of a mechanism, and I found uh, on similar other ultra portables, it's usually a little bit more reliable, this, this kind of a ribbon vibrator linkage. If you compare the keyboards between these two particular machines, you'll find they have the exact same keys in the exact same location, meaning here is your margin release on the upper left corner, your backspace is on the upper right corner, and all of the characters are identical in terms of their position. And it's all the same kind of special characters. These are older keyboards, and so they don't have the number one. They start with, the on the upper left row, a number two at the same location. And of course, you have to use a lowercase l to do a number one on both of these. So they're same keyboards in terms of the types of keys and their position. As far as the width of the keyboards on both of these machines, if you measure on the home row from the middle middle of the cent and at key to the middle of the A is 193 millimeters on the Skyrider. On the rocket, it is 192. So it's only one millimeter narrower, so pretty equivalent. And I haven't measured it, but it looks like the vertical spacing, the vertical angle of the, of the rows of keys is very, very similar in both cases. Both of these machines feature automatic ribbon reversal but they also have a manual ribbon reversal. On the Skyrider, it's this lever just above the right uh, shift. That's your manual ribbon reverse. And on the rocket, you have two little levers just forward of the platen knobs, one on each side. You just push it in or on that way or push it in on that way. So they kind of go, they go back and forth like that, these two little buttons to manually reverse the ribbon. Now let's look at the space bars on both machines. Uh, the rocket is the smaller of the two machines physically, but it actually has a wider space bar than the Skyrider. 226 millimeters wide on the rocket versus 175 millimeters wide on the Skyrider. So the rocket has definitely a wider space bar. It's worth noting that one other significant difference in features between the two machines is the Skyrider has the end of page indication system here on the left side of the platen. And it even says on the paper bale here, end set. So another significant difference, I don't know if that's important to you or not, it may or may not be, but there it is. Okay, you notice uh, on the back of the rocket there's two little holes here. That is where the little pins on the back of the hard shell lid snap into place to engage. The Skyrider that I have didn't come with any kind of a case, either hard or soft case, but it does have two little rectangular openings in the back of the machine that might engage uh, a hard case. So there's probably an option to have a hard case on the Skyrider, although most of the ones that I've seen on the internet come with a soft case, a zippered case. Okay, if you had to take the two machines apart to do some servicing inside, how easy are they to take apart? Well, starting with the Smith Corona Skyrider, you want to basically move both margin settings all the way out to the edge, and then you can move the carriage all the way out to the edge, and there are two screws on the bottom here below each uh, end of the carriage one on that side, one on the other side. If you take those two screws out, they have a star washer that comes with it. Then the entire machine, if you pull up on the carriage and pull it backwards, the entire guts of the machine pull out from the bottom of plate of the body. On the rocket, you have 
two screws on the front, two screws on the right, two screws on the left, and one screw in the back, seven screws you take out, and then the entire chassis of the machine pulls out from the base. So a little bit more screws on the rocket, but they both are fairly easy to take apart to gain access underneath. Not as convenient, however, as something like, for instance, a 5 Series Smith Corona where the bottom of the machine is exposed. But on the other hand, this is an ultra portable machine with the bottom of the machine sealed up. That means you can put it on your lap and not get worry about getting oils or greases on your clothes. You can set it on a table with a tablecloth or some other surface that you wouldn't want to get oils or greases on. It's safer to use these ultra portables on that kind of a surface because the bottom is sealed up. Okay, let's do some test typing with the rocket. It's a nice feeling keyboard. It has a little bit of a clackiness sound to it but it's acceptable. Uh, I've had louder machines. And that's one of the things to consider when you're getting an ultra portable machine is that they're not always the quietest machine. I believe of these two, the Rocket's probably the louder. But it has a good touch, a good feel to the keyboard, which reminds me, I need to mention, there is no touch adjustment to the Rocket. And the Skyrider. On my particular machine, has a little bit more of an issue with threading the paper crooked-like, so the pressure rollers underneath are not as, as in good of a shape. I'm currently using a blue ribbon in this one. Let's give it a test type. So this particular machine is quieter in operation than my Rocket, and it also has underneath the ribbon cover, just forward of the left ribbon, it has a touch adjustment. I'm currently using the touch adjustment in the high setting, and it's even in the high setting, the highest, hardest setting, I should say, it's still a nice, nice feeling touch. I really have to say the Skyrider, at least my Skyrider, has a better touch than my Hermes Rocket in terms of lightness of touch. And also the carriage return lever on the Skyrider is just so much nicer, easier to operate. The one on the Rocket is so short that you have to kind of hold the machine with your right hand and then operate the tiny little lever on the left side. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot less convenient on the Rocket. I do know though the Newer style body styles of rockets did have a longer carriage return arm, but I really uh, like the one on the Smith Corona here. It's really nice. Now comes the hard part of this comparison. Which machine do I actually favor? You know, that's a tough question because they both have certain attributes that set them apart from the other. Of course, they're both ultra portables, but the rocket is decidedly lighter and smaller, and with its integral lid that snaps into place with a carrying handle, it's actually more convenient to carry. My particular example of Skyrider doesn't have any carrying bag or case or lid, and so I have to carry it in some other fashion, like a travel bag, a shoulder bag, or whatever. So it ends up being a little bit bigger in bulk, the, the overall package, because I'm carrying it in a larger bag than what the rocket in, uh, encompasses with its just its lid with an integral handle. So that said, though, the touch and feel of my Skyrider is better, a little bit better than the Rocket. They're not bad though. Both of them are good. The Rocket is okay. It really is. I mean, there is a lot of ultra portable machines that are worse than my Rocket, okay? Uh, some of the Japanese portables, most of them, the brothers that I've tried out, have a much heavier touch. The Rocket is certainly a lighter touch. It's just a smaller, a little more delicate machine. On the other hand, the Skyrider has really the long carriage return lever makes it so much more convenient to operate compared to this dinky little angled little lever that looks like an afterthought on the, the rocket. So it's a real draw, kind of a toss up as to which one would be my favorite. I would be apt to take either one out to a coffee shop or wherever to type at. That's a good reason therefore to say, if you have to pick one or the other, 
maybe get both. And that's probably one of the things that drives us typewriter collectors into not being satisfied with just one machine or a couple machines because no one typewriter is perfect. So I don't know if you can find either one of these machines, get it. I'd say the bigger question, of course, when you're talking about collecting typewriters is really the condition of the specific machine you're looking at because there are quality differences that could uh, make a rocket better than a Skyrider, depending on the individual machine machines, how they've been taken care of in their condition, etc. Well, this is my little, just a review comparison between two of the more popular ultra portable typewriters out there, Hermes Rocket, Smith Corona Skywriter. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment below. And until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.